Uh, Shannon, what does this mean for Carson Wentz? Well, I think it means more likely he stayed. Skip, I, I saw this coming. And I said the moment that he did this, he's not, he's not going to be able to go back to Wentz. And he's done whatever relationship they might have had, he's done irreparable harm to that relationship. And so I knew one of these guys had to go. Now, I always felt it was going to be Dougie P for the simple fact, do you want 30 to $60 million of dead cap or you want to go get your new coat uh, uh, for, say, $5, 6000000 million a year? And I, thought Je I think Jeffrey Lurie thought that. There's a lot of reports circulating that Dougie P didn't seem he was reluctant to go outside and how, how yep. to hire different eyes. Right. He wanted to hire from within. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey Lurie, like, no, the problem is within. I needed a fresh set of eyes. I yep. want some fresh ideas. Yours have grown stale. Skip, the thing with Dougie P, he called plays the exact same way he did in 2017 yep. when he had that magical season. But he, he had his offense was completely healthy. Yep. You can't call plays when, although d wasn't there. Alshon has been nicked all year. Mm -hmm. Goddard and Ertz have been nicked all yep. year. Your offensive line has been in shambles all year. Miles Sanders has been in and out of the lineup. Okay, you make the switch from Carson Wentz. You're like, okay, let's see what Jalen got. And then some for some unknown reason, the last game of the season, Washington is on a, 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 a with an unhealthy quarterback. His cap is not functioning so bad that he doesn't play the following week. So he was healthy enough to play the week before, but not healthy enough to play the week after. True. Jeffrey Lord looking at that and said, hold on, so we could have won this game. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be trying to get Jalen Hurts ready. And you talking about you want to look at Nate Sutfeld? Yep. Nate Sutfeld is not going to be a part of any future with the Eagles as far as starting. So why would you want to take a look at him? It was almost like... And I think Jeffrey Lewis looking like... And I'm sure maybe some of the uh, players chimed in. Dougie don't have the locker room anymore. Mm. After that, what he did on Sunday night... I would agree. Your team, you can do what you want to do with it. But guys don't look at him the same. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey Lewis said... Hey, what did he say, Skip? He said he felt in the best interest that both, both parties... Go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. Say, I don't want to get into. Did he deserve to stay? Did he deserve to get fired? I, that's that, that's that's a that's a different that's a different argument. Mm -hmm. Both parties should go their separate ways. It's not so much what he said; it's what he didn't say. So I'm not surprised by this. I saw this coming. I felt that one of these guys had to leave. I always felt it was going to be Dougie P. I'm not surprised that it happened. Mm. Nor am I, but I am very happy as a lifelong Cowboy fan that this happened because it means Carson Wentz is back in power in Philadelphia. And he's going to win the division. You call him walk it to him Wentz, and I call him <laughs> give it to him Wentz because he gives it and gives it and gives it away. He had a disastrous year this year. He led this league in giveaways. He did. He led this league in turnover-worthy plays, says Pro Football Focus, which ranked him the 34th best quarterback in the league. Damn, they're only 32 starters. I so he's behind some backups, huh? Yeah, some who started <laughs> a little bit here and there. He was second to last in completion percentage. I could just go on and on. He wound up with 16 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. It was a bad year. Yes. But if you closely listen to what Jeffrey Lurie said yesterday, first he, he tried to say, that, that Doug Peterson didn't deserve to go. Well, didn't deserve to go. Well, then, what why are you, you let him go to well, What are you talking about? And then he, he also tried to make the point this wasn't about Carson Wentz. And then he went on and on to make the point this was nothing but about Carson right. Wentz. He believes the next coach will be able to get the best out that, of it. That is correct. And he <laughs> has no choice because he gave Carson Wentz his money. Right. And if you cut Carson Wentz, which would be the worst case scenario right now, you would owe more than $59 million in dead cap money. And, and, and you wouldn't, you, it wouldn't result in any savings until 2022 if you cut him right now. And they're not going to cut him. Skip, and they are, hold on. They already got two, a quarter of a billion committed in contracts when the cap is supposed to be somewhere between 195 and 175. Yep. So you already, without Carson Wentz, you already $70, $80 million over, potential, mm -hmm. over the potential cap. Okay. So, I'm on record. I've never wavered on this. I don't believe in Carson Wentz as a long-term answer at, as your starting quarterback. Okay. 
because he's not accurate enough and he's not poised enough under fire. Happy feet, crazy feet. He, he plays hard. I think his heart's in the right place. He will literally run through a brick wall to get a first down. Uh, I, I think he mended a lot of fences in the locker room the, the last couple of years mm -hmm. that where he was a little bit distant and aloof from Skip. a lot of players. You remember how we looked at Tannehill? Mm -hmm. He goes to Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith gets him. They can run the football a little bit, and we look at Ryan Tannehill a lot different yep. than we did when he was in Miami. Well, maybe a new set of that. eyes. Right. Maybe a new set of eyes. Maybe a new coaching staff can come in here. And believe in it because I think Dougie P stopped believing in Carson. But the question that I have for you, have you seen enough from Jalen Hurts to say he's the guy moving forward? I just believe in Jalen Hurts' football character, his natural-born leadership. He is not the, the thrower of the football that Carson Wentz is. He's not as big and strong as Carson Wentz is as, as, a, as a bigger athlete. Mm -hmm. But Jalen is weight room strong. He runs strong. The, the team gravitates to him. The, the team will will feed off him. And I believe he got thrown into a fire that was just as bad off as, remember, yes. as, as what Carson Wentz right. was having to deal with. And he got a lot more out of that team, I thought, than Carson Wentz was he getting out of He got one win. Okay? He got one win, Skip. But he, he had them against the Washington football team in position to be 17-all, and they went for it on fourth and, what was it, four? Yeah. Well, well uh, Walker Tuam had them in position to win the game, and then mm -hmm. Dougie P wanted to settle for a field goal, just run the ball into the line and kick a field goal. Mm-hmm. I believe in Jalen Hurts, but I told you that before the draft. And I believe he'll prove to be a more successful, performing starting quarterback than Carson Wentz. But I don't know now, if you bring in a new coach, right. what will that mean for Jalen? I have no idea. Well, I think, I think it means that he's probably going to be the backup. I don't think, I don't see it as a quarterback competition. They're going to give Wentz all the reps. They want to make sure. They're going to do, Skip, they, when you invest that kind of money, Skip, you're going to see this thing through. You're going to give it every opportunity to succeed. It's just like with anything. You invest in a stock, Skip, it starts to go to dip a little bit. You're not going to get up off it. Mm -mm. You're going to give it every chance to get, you're going to give it every chance to rebound and try to see this thing through. And so I believe that's what they're going to do with Carson Wentz. Um, like I said, I haven't seen enough. And I'm not saying Jalen Hurts can't be a, a solid quarterback in this league, but I haven't seen enough in the four games that I saw him start because what I saw, the guy that turns the ball over at the same rate, he gets sacked at the same rate. For a guy that's more mobile, he gets sacked at the same rate. He turns the ball over at maybe a slightly higher rate when you factor in fumbles and interceptions, and he didn't win any more games. And okay, the completion remember, percentage is worse. He was a rookie quarterback who got thrown into a fire against the New Orleans Saints, and he beat them yes. at home. Yes. And then I thought he played very well at Dallas, but he got outplayed by Andy Dalton. He threw two picks, though. Okay, he did, but but he also had four, what was the combined yardage, 411 combined yards. We're going to do that. Empty gap don't, don't mean nothing. Ooh. He would have won that game against Washington if he had just – if. Peterson had stuck. Oh, I believe that. I, did, did, you, you get no argument from me. I believe that. Yep. Doug Peterson wrote a book called Fearless after he won the <laughs> Super Bowl, <laughs> and he didn't win it with Carson Wentz. He went on a magical Super Bowl role with Nick Foles at quarterback. Yeah. Nick Foles won Super Bowl MVP and played back-to-back -back NFC Championship game Super Bowl, two of the, the greatest quarterback games you'll ever see in the history of the playoffs. I agree. Boom, boom. And that was that. And it put Dougie P on the map, and it allowed him to write a book called I Am Fearless. I don't know about all that. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden, it went to his head. And I believe he didn't want to hear anything from how he rose from the GM. He didn't want to hear anything more from Jeffrey Lurie, the owner. I got this. And I do believe he, he has a like a soft spot for Nate Sudfeld. He believes he can play in this league because, as you said, he sees Nate Sudfeld as him. That's what he was. <laughs> he was that quarterback. Skip, for me. And what's what I've learned about coaches, they would rather lose their way than win someone else's way. Because Jeffrey Lure was like imploring him. It's, and he's like, look, you just need a new a set of eyes. He was upset. I read the reports that said he was upset that they made him get rid of Al, I think Al Grow, mm -hmm. a, a, a yep. offensive assistant mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. See, Lurie's saying, you got to go get the hottest young offensive coordinator out there. Right. And, and he's saying, no, I, I do this. I got this. No, but no, no, no. no. But I've been eating your cooking for the last three, four years, and they, it, ain't, okay. it don't taste the same. Yep. So I need a new – look, I'm going to let you still be the head chef. 
but I need a new sous chef. Yeah, he did. That's what he That's said. That's basically what he said, mm -hmm. Skip. So, and, and, and why would you, if, if you, why would you give resistance, Skip? You realize there's only 32 restaurants, and we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's a, they're not opening any new restaurants, Skip, right now. You do realize, Dougie P, this is one of 32 jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the greatest job. But it is a, it's one of the 32, so which means it's pretty it's pretty outstanding. Mm -hmm. And for the owner to make a recommendation, at least it will not give us some thought. Yeah. Okay, sure. Mm. Well, Pro Football Focus says of these six openings right now, ranked last in appeal would be this Philadelphia. Oh, I, job. I, I, and I totally agree. You see so the, you, the, you the got, offensive line is in shambles, yeah, the steel position. Your, your cap. cap is in shambles, yeah. and you you at least have a quarterback quandary. Right. You're, you're not sure which way you're going right. to go. Okay? Right. So good luck to whoever walks into that door. I mean, somebody going to want that job, Skip, because like I said, it's one of 32. Well, that's true. But it's, I, I was looking at the Chargers. I'm looking at Jacksonville. I'm definitely looking at Houston. Oh, I, let me see. I want to see what Deshaun does before yeah. I look at Houston. No, I agree. <laughs> if Deshaun's but, but, not there. But Deshaun is Deshaun. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. If Deshaun's not in Houston, uh, yeah, no. yeah you, you for failure. Yeah. You had that job for about two years. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.